Hello, welcome to 20 Acre Farms. Today we are going to be making buttermilk biscuits in the kitchen, so thanks for joining. We got time on our side. So let's get started. Normally I'm going to start with the dry ingredients, but actually I'm going to be using buttermilk. And so I'm going to make some homemade buttermilk, which is super easy if you don't have any buttermilk on hand. You don't need to go out and buy any. All you do is a cup of milk, and I try to do organic whole milk. Right now we're not milking, so we don't have any um, milk on hand, any raw milk. So I try to buy organic when I can. Um, and then you're just going to add a tablespoon of white vinegar into your milk. And that needs to just be set aside to clabber. Um, so it's going to basically kind of sour the milk. So we're going to let that set. It needs to set for maybe five to ten minutes. Now we're going to be doing our dry ingredients. So we're going to go ahead and uh, put our three cups of einkorn flour in. I've never really played around much with einkorn flour, but from what I understand, it's an ancient grain before it's been uh, touched, um, before it's been kind of adulterated with genetics or anything like that. So I'm going to play around with it today. So we're going to put three cups of that einkorn flour in there. Uh, next, we're going to do three teaspoons of baking powder. And for this recipe, we're actually going to use baking powder and baking soda. Okay, now we're going to do a half teaspoon of baking soda. Okay, then you're just going to do a dash of salt. And you don't need a whole lot, so you could probably just use your salt and pepper shaker. So maybe an eighth of a teaspoon or something. I don't measure too much when I bake. <laughs> All right, now you're going to mix that up with a whisk. Just mix all those dry ingredients really good before you start adding in your lard. And what's great is we just made lard not too long ago, so I have tons of lard on hand in our pantry down in our basement. Um, and this is a great way to, to substitute lard instead of your Crisco or your butter. It's a great way to use that, that good cooking fat that we rendered ourselves. So make sure to check that out in the video um, on our channel as well, how you render your own lard. All right, we got the dry ingredients all mixed up. So you can see here the milk is starting to clabber. It's starting to set up. And that's what you're wanting it to do is to just uh, come together and, um, and gel up a little bit. Then you're gonna set your oven to 400 degrees as well. Here is our snow white looking lard that we made. It is, um, we just keep it down in our pantry, which is really cold downstairs. It's a cement basement and I love that it's uh, preserving it. Uh, so we're going to just add about five to six tablespoons of lard and you're going to just do it a tablespoon at a time. Um, you know, I haven't made a ton of biscuits, so I'm kind of playing around with some different recipes online and finding ingredients that are a little bit healthier that we already have. Um, and I think that it just you just got to keep playing around with it until you find a consistency of flour to lard that you like. Um, like normally when they call to put in butter, they tell you to cut in the butter. And that just means you don't want to just add melted butter in there. You want it to kind of uh, almost turn into like a cornmeal rest, uh, mixture. So I'm going to actually use my hands for this part. And so basically we're just going to keep grabbing the butter or sorry, the lard into the flour mixture. And you'll just keep doing this until it all gathers together with the dry ingredients with your lard. And eventually it's going to kind of turn into a little bit of grit, like a cornmeal texture. And if you don't ha happen to have lard on hand, you can use any other uh, cooking fats if you have. Um, I'd prefer butter uh, besides lard. I wouldn't, I wouldn't ever recommend Crisco personally. It's such a processed oil. Um, and you lose all the good benefits that lard does have for you. All right, this is really coming together nice. It's kind of turning into grainy texture. 
I still feel some big chunks of lard in there, so I'm just gonna keep going until all of that has been combined. All right, now we're just gonna add in. All right, you can see that milk has clabbered. It's, it's kind of chunked up a little bit. So you can see it's really coming together like a nice biscuit texture. All right, so I'm gonna use my hands to finish that out. Then you're gonna to wanna to flour your surface just on your counter. So that's what I'm gonna do next here. So we're just gonna flour the surface and the thing you don't wanna do with biscuits is put too much flour, uh, otherwise it's gonna dry them out. So you can always add more. And uh, so we're just gonna throw our mixture on top of there. And um, I actually don't even own a rolling pin. How sad is that? So just gonna roll it by hand. So you're gonna add some of that floured surface into your mixture so that it's easier to work with. And then you're just gonna mix some of that in so that it's not sticky to your hands. And then we're gonna roll it out with our hands as best as we can. You can use a rolling pin if you wanna get all fancy. I'm sure my grandma would be appalled that I don't even own a rolling pin. She used to make homemade bread and lefse strudels, all of that, homemade bread, biscuits. There was always something being baked. So I'm just gonna go ahead and flatten this out as even as I can so that we can get our biscuits cut out. And depending on the size of your family and how big the biscuits that you wanna make are, that's gonna determine how thin you roll them out. I'm just gonna actually use the lid of a quart jar or a small mouth jar um, as my biscuit size. And I'm not sure these are gonna bake it by morning. I'm probably gonna eat a couple tonight. All right, so now you're just gonna cut out with your shape, whatever you wanna do. And I'm gonna throw them on my lodge cast iron skillet there. And these are about maybe quarter inch thick. And uh, depending on, I'm sure your altitude has something to do with it, but depending on how, how big you have them, um, what kind of flour you used is kind of going to determine your cooking time, but I'm going to throw it on 400 for about 15 minutes and um, depends on how brown you like your biscuits too. I'm really liking how this einkorn flour set up with this. Actually, it's the first time I've ever played with einkorn flour. So we got a bunch already set up. So I'm gonna probably make them, let's see, three, six, eight on this pan. With your leftovers here, you could just uh, combine it again, roll it out, make more. And that's what I'm gonna do is just make some more biscuits out of that. This is something really fun to do with your kids. Our kids are sleeping right now, but this is really fun for them to be able to play with uh, textures and learn how to make some food from scratch as well. All right, we can make a few more with this batch. If you're a super organized baker, you're probably gonna drive yourself batty by watching my video because I don't, I don't really measure stuff too well, and I don't, uh, I don't uh, roll things out evenly, but it works, comes together. All right, we'll get a few more out of this last little chunk, and maybe a little bit of a dough just for some testers. Mmm, that's good with that lard in there. I've heard that cooking with lard is the best way to make pastries and breads, so. I'd probably have to agree with them, but this is going to be our first trial run. So here's my last little baby muffin in here. And um, that's what I'm going to bake them in. I, I love our cast iron, and it gets better with age. It is seriously getting better every single day, the better we keep them seasoned. Um, 
And uh, if you ever feel like you ruined a cast iron because you left it out and it got rusty, there's always ways to um, bring them back to life. So don't ever think that you've kind of killed off your cast iron pans. So um, we're gonna let those bake for about 15 minutes. I'm noticing that the tops are not getting brown like I want that nice golden crisp. So I'm just gonna flip them over in there. Be careful when you're cooking with cast iron because it does burn a lot hotter, I think, than most. All right, we're gonna throw a little bit of butter. Put that melting down because we about to have some southern biscuits. Look at how crispy and flaky. Oh my heavens. I think I understand what people say when you've cooked with lard, you're never gonna go back. Oh my goodness, look how nice and golden brown they got. They are flaky. I can't wait to get some butter in there. Let's go. Let's go. All right. Can't wait for all that to melt. So we're just going to go ahead and dollop some good old butter on there. Mmm. Yum, yum. Put some wild plum jelly on that. Butter, don't let, don't let the skeptics tell you that it's not good for you. It's really good for you. Especially when it's homemade from your cow. Which, like I said, I can't wait for Belle to have her baby in a few months because I'm missing homemade butter, ice cream, cheese. All right, let's put some wild plum jelly on there. The chia seeds. Mmm. Mmm. That is good. Flaky. Mmm. Buttery. That is a good old biscuit. Tomorrow, we are going to be making some bacon from our pig. Mmm. And eggs from the coop. We make McDonald's muffins. I mean, McDonald's ain't gonna have anything on this. <laughs> that was delicious. Mm. You guys gotta try this recipe. Alright, that should do it. I'm probably gonna have two of these tonight, at least. Um, that's okay. Thanks for joining when we made these buttermilk biscuits. They are delicious. Make sure to leave a comment below if you try these out and what you loved and what you didn't love. Uh, make sure to keep an eye on our channel. We have some fun things coming for you.